NBC Charlotte Defenders investigation, a U.S. Army colonel turned campus safety head. John Bodkin's command of the Guantanamo Bay military prison came under fire several years ago for possible human and civil rights violations toward the accused terrorists detained there. And today he is a top administrator at UNC Charlotte making a six figure salary. And now there's a new effort to remove him from his campus post. Dozens of tweets using the hashtag fire John Bogdan. Now, as some are questioning his past, the defenders Nathan Morabito has discovered that UNC Charlotte is defending their associate vice chancellor for safety and security. He's live from campus tonight with the very latest on this. Nathan. Yeah, hey there. In the face of the fire, John Bogdan campaign, UNC Charlotte said the retired colonel's significant leadership skills were critical in the response to the deadly April 30th shooting here and the ongoing recovery efforts. Now, he was hired within the last year, and no one is questioning any decisions he's made here, but they are questioning his time in charge of Guantanamo Bay. Controversial searches, a hunger strike, and spying on attorney-client meetings under his watch. Years later, those incidents have followed Colonel John Bogdan from Guantanamo Bay to UNC Charlotte. It just makes me uneasy. In recent weeks, fueled by an editorial in the student newspaper and a group of organizers, the Fire John Bogdan campaign has surfaced. It just doesn't look good for our reputation, so I, he, I feel like he should be removed. Not every participant is ready to go that far, but students like Roshan McClendon say Bogdan's history begs more questions. I wouldn't say him being a prior warden of Guantanamo Bay is immediately disqualifying, even though it is deeply concerning. I'm not worried about the critics. I'm not worried about my critics. That's what Colonel Bogdan told CBS's 60 Minutes in 2013, after enacting significant security changes that same year at Gitmo in an effort to improve safety. The changes included his reinstitution of groin searches, what he described in a sworn statement as standard army search procedure meant to limit risk after guards found homemade weapons. Initially, a judge called it an exaggerated response, but an appeals court overruled that, calling it reasonable. There was also this independent report, which identified listening devices disguised as smoke detectors that could pick up whispers in attorney-client meeting rooms, something the government admitted existed but said was never used for that purpose, eventually making changes to alleviate concerns. Citing that report and a serious degradation in the quality of life for detainees, several attorneys asked the Secretary of Defense to examine Colonel Bogdan's fitness for command. It's unclear if that request was ever acted upon. But what is clear is what's inside the highly decorated retired colonel's military file, provided to us by him for review at our request. Roughly 30 years of awards and glowing references, and nothing but compliments in 2013 about his ability to flawlessly restore order to the detainee camp, a model of military professionalism and excellence, with no international humanitarian law complaints, his superiors calling him a magnificent officer and truly exceptional army leader. UNC administrators would not talk on camera, but in a statement told us his hiring followed a national search, complete with extensive reference and background checks, adding references spoke of his character and commitment to service, which have been evident in his time at the university. Now, in response to our question, UNC Charlotte told us it did require John Bogdan to take a behavioral assessment. Now, that's not normal when it comes to administrative hiring here, but because of the critical nature of this position, UNC Charlotte said it required him to take and pass that behavioral assessment. Reporting live at UNC Charlotte, Nathan Morabito, NBC Charlotte. Highly vetted and highly decorated, still controversial. Thank you, Nate.